Scott Brown here. In today's exciting episode, we get a large timber bifold window and we install it in a house. All right, before this window comes, we need the sill tray to be done. Now on the plans, it shows the sill tray like that with a gap both underneath and above it. And that's so water doesn't get trapped in there if it gets there. But uh, one of those. Yeah. This sill has to be completely level because obviously heavy windows, they need to slide smoothly. Uh, but also the sill on the inside of this window is gonna be flush with the flooring on the inside of the room. That's huge. Beauty. Oh my god, it's like we're not building, bro. Putting some temporary screws and packing it so it's plumb. So I really want to know where that wood comes from there. What? Plumb. Plumb. Alright, so this is a bit of the flooring that came off the laundry and the back of it has been sanded so you can see what it's going to look like once you've sanded it. We thought it was Remu. When you look at that, it's quite reddish, but that's just years of God knows what stains. As soon as you sand them off, you get that lighter Cody color. Now we've got a bit of the Cody here that we gave to the window guy, and he has incorporated it into the window. And the whole idea is that we then do the flooring in this kitchen and bring it right up to the Cody in the window there. So we've just put it down a bit, we'll get some packers and we'll get it mint with that. Cut it nice and square. And then your floor, when the bifolds are open, will look like it's just flowing outside. Last day of 2020, and uh, I'm gonna put this little window in. Oh, 
All right, so what we have to do first with these windows is put a sill tray in. We did that under the large bifold window there as well. So the sill tray is just steel, basically. We fold up the edges, it goes beyond the width of the window, and the idea is that if any moisture escapes the window, whether through the window or to the side of the window, hits the tray and then goes out. Alright, so these packers here, are, it's like a damp proof membrane that we use to um, separate timber from concrete. So it's a good choice for a packer as well because it can, you know, it's not going to be damaged by water. So I put that between the window and the sill tray. So if any moisture gets in there, it doesn't get trapped. Let's pop this window in there. And the weatherboard's going to sit approximately like that, working the way up. So that means that this comes in too far and we need to trim this but we want it to be nice and tight against the weatherboards. So I've just cut close enough and the idea of that is you get the window in, get it parallel with the wall and make sure it's pretty close to where you want it, level wise, and then um, you scribe the perfect angle on the weatherboard and then that'll give you that last 10 mil that it needs to go in. That's right Scott, you're really coming along. Yeah, welcome to the last episode of 2020 Richard. What a way to go out. Exactly, not bad. Oh, I've got a rusty blade. Yeah. Okay, that is smooth-ish. This is uh, even less smooth, but paint it and it should be fine. girls are on holiday now? Yeah, right. Oh, yeah, like the actual, yeah, yeah. actual bakers are coming and like serving. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What did you get, bro? Dun, 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 dun. It's the big reveal. Ooh. Salami sub. Salami sub. Little taste of Italy. Mm. Right here mm. in Kingsland. And I got the char grilled veggies. Some more flavour? No, tomato. Chuck it in there, bro. What do you got, Sam? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was wondering what you're doing. So the window here is adjustable and it has these allen key sort of bolts with a thread on them and you can turn it up and down and then when you're finally happy with it there's a nut that you loosen or tighten and uh, that takes the weight of the window. Right now the weight of the glass has pushed the windows down onto the sill so we need to, we need to crank it up a bit. Turns out I don't have the right allen key bit. Well I do but it's attached to this thing here and Trying to get that up against the door, you can't even turn it, so... I have to go to Bunnings. When I was little, I used to think Alan Keys were named after my brother. Is your brother called Alan, is he? I was a bit jealous. It's like, how can he get like, <laughs> yeah, special yeah. things named after him? Where's the Richard Key? Yeah, exactly. Where's the Rich Key? <laughs> See you soon. Doesn't matter how many tools you have as a builder, you always need something you don't have. No, uh... 
two years ago I rushed to the same Bunnings on either Christmas Eve or today the 23rd because I had cracked a paver and <laughs> we were doing a path just on the other side of the hill here and here I am again two years later oh, pretty much got every possible bit that I could imagine that might work don't want to be caught out don't want to do another trip Yes. Handle's a bit chunky on this, so I might have to just go back to the good old Richard Key. Yeah, thanks, Scott. No worries. I'm a, I'm a nice guy. Yeah, they're called Richard Keys now, bro. You got your single door there if you want to get to the backyard. But if you want a little bit more, you want to really open the place up. Two hundred and fifty kilos of double glazing. Closed in by Christmas. We did it. All right. Just before we go, 2020 has been insane. So I wanted to say a big thank you to everybody who has bought my merch and supported me on Patreon, PayPal, and most of all, everyone who's watched my videos. But thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Um, usually around this time of the year, we take a couple of weeks off and this year is no different. So I'll be back in a couple of weeks time, around about mid-January. So until the next exciting episode, thanks a lot.